Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to have a look at another new brewery and this beer was released on the 2nd of May 2019 through the local and small assortments in Seistenbolaget here in Sweden. So like you say, another new Swedish brewery that I've never tried anything from but I have had a good number of beers from this brewer and she's pretty good I have to say at the traditional styles of beer so I'm curious to see how this one turns out. So for the first time we are going to go to to Hop Notch Brewing her from the Stockholm area and we're having a taste of the Hop Star which is an Amarillo IPA coming in at 7% ABV. So yeah, um, really when it comes to Amarillo it's one of these big orangey hops and this was the hop that really, one of the hops that really kicked off the idea of a big fruity juicy IPA along with the likes of Citra and Simcoe. I've always enjoyed orangey hops in my IPAs and of course you've, now, these days you've got Mosaic, Azaka as well, you've got Pacifica from New Zealand and you've got um, Mandarin and Bavaria from Germany as well. There's a lot of orangey hops out there, but it was really Amarillo, Citra and Simcoe that started off this idea. And I guess you can count Nelson Sovin from New Zealand in that bracket as well. But um, yeah, it should be a really interesting beer, this one. And I've got a feeling this might be one that really hits the spot for me as a fan of these orangey IPAs. But really looking forward to trying this one. And as always, I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Hop Notch Brewing. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers, as I said. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefetch, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Hot Notch Brewing then. So Hot Notch Brewing, as I mentioned to you earlier, were founded back in 2017 and they were founded by Jessica Heydrich, who's very well known in craft beer circles in Sweden, and her sambo, Marcus Cooperide. So Jessica has a background as a drug researcher and she worked in that for about 15-20 years or something like that but then she was recruited to Galatea as their head brewer back in 2009 and they're a very well known uh, food company here in Sweden and she oversaw the growth of the, the brewery division to be one of the largest craft breweries in Sweden. I believe they were the third largest at one point but Marcus had previously worked as a civil engineer and in the IT industry and he'd previously been in the Swedish the, the military branch of the Swedish Reserve actually um, but he largely deals with the operations and business side of the company. Um, but Jessica left Galatea in 2017 to found her own brewery and quickly she was offered the chance to brew at the Vaxholm Brewery which is just, it's on one of the islands as well. Vaxholm is one of the groups of islands to the south of the of Stockholm in the sweet, in the Stockholm archipelago. Um, but they offered her the chance to brew the Vaxholm beer, so she's been tweaking the recipes there, and they also offered her the chance to use some of the capacity to brew her uh, own things as well. And so far, as of May 2019, they've produced five different beers. Their very first one was called Hello World, which was a session IPA. They've released this one. They've very recently released uh, the new Pink Boots beer, which is a kind of tribute to women involved in the beer industry which is kind of cool. They do have an older brewing as well which I would love to try and also an Imperial Sweet Stout which should be kind of interesting too but so far there's only the Hello World, this one and the uh, Pink Boots one have made it through Seistan Bulaga but hopefully the other ones make it out there at some point soon too. I'd love to have a go particularly at, at the Stout and the uh, the, the Flanders Brown Beer, that would be a really interesting one. It's a style I've got really into recently, actually. Um, but yeah, that's all you really need to know about Hop Notch Brewing just now. So a new brewery, but with a very known, uh, well-known and very well-respected brewer, actually. When it comes to Jessica Heydrich, I, I've always felt that she's very good at the traditional beer styles. Uh, you saw me review one of the beers from Vaxholm Brewery just a couple of videos ago, and I think Jessica has a real knack when it comes to the traditional German-Czech types of beer. So I'm really curious to see how she does with something that's a little bit more 
I guess you could say adventurous than the other beers that I've had from her before. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about the brewery. If you want to learn a little bit more, you can check out the brewery website in the description below and you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that and that'll keep you up to date with all the latest goings on there. So um, yeah, let's go on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. We can get rid of my brewery notes. So this one, as I mentioned to you at the start of the video, is a 7% IPA. Um, it's hopped mainly with Amarillo. I'm guessing it will have another uh, maybe bittering hop or something but it says on the side here everybody has to start somewhere as a hot hearted woman with a wee bit of, of uh, hubris we started with an icon at the modern classic hop Amarillo like us a whim of nature loaded with myrosine Amarillo is often described as a supercharged version of Cascade with citrus orange and pine flavour and aromas stay cool and uh, the beer refrig uh, stay cool and the beer refrigerated it's unfiltered for the taste not for the haze so um, yeah it says it's got uh, wheat malt in it and have uh, have them all as well so yeah I think this one might be more of a kind of New England style IPA so we'll just give it a little flip like that and get the haze back into it but yeah nicely presented this one the artwork on the beers is uh, pretty distinctive actually I do like the penguin penguins are cool actually I think there's 23 species of penguins if I remember correctly so this one I'm, if I'm remembering correctly is an emperor penguin but um, yeah I always like the macaroni ones with the little hairy bits they were always quite funny but really nice artwork and I have to say I do like the the hot notch brewing kind of thing there actually, the sort of hand-drawn type there is pretty cool and it tells you the artwork is by Kungstala Art logo by Dagan so um, yeah nice artwork on it so yeah let's get this guy out then and we'll get on to the tasting like I say a 7% IPA this one we'll see if it's a New England or uh, exactly what it is looks like a New England IPA ooh that looks good it's nice to see Amarillo uh, being, you know, almost a tribute to Amarillo, if you like, because it has kind of been pushed aside in favour of Mosaic these days, and it was one of the hops that really kicked everything off, as I was mentioning earlier. But as you can see, this beer's poured with a nice, solid finger of a frothy, I would say, perfect white head, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But, you know, overall, it looks pretty nice. In terms of the colour, I would describe this one as more of a yellow than an orange. It really has got a lovely colour to it actually. If I put my fingers behind the glass you can see it's got a really nice bright kind of hazy quality to it there but overall a really nice looking beer this one. So as I always say you know you can't really beat the haze of a, well don't always say that but you do in terms of appearance you can't really beat some of the lovely colours you'll get in uh, in IPAs. But yeah let's take a closer look at the aroma and see how we go. Nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance when you consider that it is an IPA. So yeah. Oh yeah. It's a little bit of nostalgia to smell this beer, to be honest with you. You know, Amarillo, it was such a... You know, it was such a beast of a hop back in the day. And it's just a shame it's been pushed aside, you know. It's happening with a couple of hops, in my opinion. Um, you know, Simcoe used to be used by pretty much everyone. These days, it's been pushed aside in favour of Galaxy. And, you know, the main reason, I guess, is just for complexity. Because, you know... Um, mosaic isn't just orange, it's got a little bit of a pineapple note and things like that to it as well. Um, it can also have a little bit of a blueberry complexity to it also. The same with Simcoe and Galaxy. Simcoe for me was a very straight up passion fruit. But these days you've also got Galaxy which has the sort of pineapple notes and the passion fruit. So there's a few hops that have come out to re almost to replace these that brewers are kind of preferring now. So it is nice to go back to a very straight up um, Amarillo. I would like to see more brewers using this again because you know sometimes simplicity is a little bit better um but yeah it is a real kind of nostalgia trip with this one i have to admit um i'd never really gotten the the pine aspect of amarillo i never found amarillo to be piney i always found it to have a nice floral character and almost a little soft earthiness to it but never piney to be honest but straight away with this one you smell the lovely oily juicy oranges in the beer which is a uh, really nice um, and yeah I really like how everything goes together in this one I mean it's a lovely juicy fruity note that comes out of this beer lovely big oily oranges you've got a nice sort of grassy floral quite a little bit of that earthiness in the background there it really is just a very nostalgic one it's almost like an old school IPA this in terms of its aroma the malt base is fairly mild. You've got a little bit of an oaty kind of quality to this one. Um, nice little bit of a wheaty quality too. 
just a nice sort of white bready malt base and um, you can really smell the smoothness of this one it's almost a little bit sweet there's a little bit of a biscuity quality uh, in there as well which is quite nice um, so yeah I mean there's nothing overly surprising about the aroma in this one but it is a little bit nostalgic if you're a big fan of the IPAs back in sort of you know 2014 2015 maybe even a little bit earlier than that in fairness um, you are going to enjoy the aroma this one's got a lovely big juicy amarillo quality to it so um, yeah take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma this one as I say nice lovely juicy big oranges a little bit of a soft kind of floral note there is some grassiness to this as well the green side of the hops are very straight up grassy a little bit floral and a little touch of earthiness in there as well and you've also got that nice smooth um, bready and uh, wheaty backbone in there which is um, which is quite nice so um, yeah take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma this one to me it's like going back a couple of years uh, to the good old days if we can say that a modern classic probably is the uh, the best way to describe it as they put on the can but let's get stuck into this one then and see how we get on so this one is called the hop star a 7% uh, IPA. I'm guessing it's a New England type IPA going by the appearance and the wheaty presence uh, from uh, Hop Notch Brewing based at Waxholm's Brewers in Waxholm just near Stockholm in Sweden. Let's get stuck in. Slanger School. Yeah. It's pretty nice actually. I mean first thing that comes to mind with this beer is that it is very sessionable. Um, I'm not sure whether um, this one would be considered a, you know, a, a sort of a New England or whether it would be a West Coast beer. If it is a West Coast one, then it's more like a kind of pale ale, to be honest with you. Um, it does actually, in my opinion, if I blind tasted this, I'd probably be more inclined to say that it's a paleo because the malt base does actually feel quite light in this. It's not one of the creamier and thicker uh, malt bases that you're going to come across. To me, it feels like a very straight up, almost pale malty quality to it. You do get a little bit of the wheatiness, but to me, um, it's more of a pale malty quality that comes out of this one. Yeah. But I like what they've done here. Let's put the last one and just see. Ah, yeah, there's a little bit more of the haze in it now. We'll see how it comes out with this. But yeah, you can you can actually see the difference in that now that I've put the other little bit in. Yeah, there we are. With this one, use a bigger glass. I'm using a glass that's only really suited for a, a three thirty, to be honest with you. So maybe turn the can upside down and uh, or give it a roll or something like that before you uh, drink this here because you do taste a bit of difference in that you can feel the malty qualities coming out a little bit more now but that said I probably still would think that this one is a paleo rather than an IPA just from the uh, the mouth it's got a really nice um, kind of straight up but simple blend of flavours and it works well actually it's a nice quite um, sort of refreshing paleo this one I would say it doesn't do anything overly bold. Um, it's almost, I guess, it probably is almost just like it's a tribute to the Amarillo hop, actually. It's very kind of straight up. It's almost like a single hop ale, to be honest with you, which is kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, with this one, it's, again, like I say, very straight up. You can feel that sort of pale malty quality, just blanket in the middle of your tongue. The further you go into the aftertaste, you can feel that that sort of white bready quality just pushes its way um, out of the palate a little bit. There's almost a little bit of a biscuity sweetness in the middle of your palate too, which is nice. Yeah, I like how that, how this one goes together. I mean, the malt base is, say, very simple, almost pale malty quality, a little bit of a wheaty note in there. And also, you've just got a little bit of the, um, you've got a little bit of that biscuity sweetness in the middle very straight up sometimes simplicity is better and it really works the hoppy side of things then back corners of the palate you've got a little touch of earthiness there but it's quite it's almost like a I'd forgotten that but Amarillo that it has almost a German um, noble type earthiness to it it's a very soft earthiness um, which is interesting but there is a little bit of dryness to it there and that's what distinguishes it from that from the almost sweet earthiness that you get from the Hallertown and the Titnangers and things like that 
So um, yeah, but as you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, you can feel some of the floral aromatic notes just pushing their way out of this one. It does dry out a little bit as you come further forward on the palate and then around the very front curve of the tongue, it's just a little bit lighter and more um, grassy, I would say. That's a really nice one, this actually. It's, it's one of these beers, it's not overly complex, it's just a nice drinker and it's all about how the flavours just kind of transition and, and blend together actually. So behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to come out of the beer. And for me, it's all about the oranges, it's this nice juicy, um, it's this nice juicy but still quite oily orangey quality. I've compared to the uh, the Mosaic for example, I've always found Amarillo just to be that little bit more oily um, in its orange flavours, whereas the Tangerine is a little bit brighter and a little bit more juicy if that makes sense. Um, and I do like that actually, when you put Mosaic and Amarillo together you get this really nice complex um, complex orangey flavour and you know, it might be cool actually to see if it was possible to brew an IPA with Azaka uh, Amarillo uh, Mosaic, also Pacifica and Mandarina Bavaria, if you could get them all together you'd be in for a real big orange beast of an IPA actually. Maybe an interesting home brewing project that I can try at some point. But um, yeah, um, in terms of you know, in, in terms of the beer generally, this is really nice. It does kind of strike me as being a sort of almost single hop IPA, but it's it's nicely done. And you know, Jessica, she's a, I guess you, I don't know if you'd say a seasoned brewer. She she knows what she's doing, and she's pulled off another really quite nice beer there. And um, this one, as I say, has the sort of uh, single hop session IPA kind of vibe to it. But seven percent, it is a little bit heavier. Um, if we're sort of putting it in the style bracket. It's a bit difficult because to me it's not quite as creamy as some of the, the New England IPAs that you can come across. It comes across to me as more of a, a sort of West Coast type pale ale but it doesn't have too much in the way of uh, sweetness to the malt base. It really has a, this sort of session IPA kind of vibe to it but the main point to take away is that it is a nice beer and it's very easy drinking. Maybe a little bit too easy drinking for 7% ABV but um, yeah it's cool to see her have a go at this one because like I say most of the beers that I've drank from uh, Jessica before have been um, traditional German Czech type beers actually now that I think about it so yeah thumbs up to her for this one she's done a nice job of this I would like to have a go at her Eau de Brown and uh, Stout beer if I can get a hold of a can of those I'm not sure how I'll do that but we'll see but yeah I like this one and it, it really kind of shows off the Amarillo so it's a little bit nostalgic in that sense um, but in terms of the mouthfeel then um, to me this is a fairly light body beer, it's at the top end of light body to be honest with you. Um, carbonation does have a little bit of crispness to it. Uh, the mouthfeel overall is quite wet and quite crisp. I think that's uh, that's fair to say about this one. It's quite a wet but it's still quite a crisp mouthfeel. The malt base is fairly smooth in this one. It dries out a little bit the further you go into the aftertaste. On the hoppy side of things, I think you're looking somewhere in the region of about 30 maybe 25 IBUs with this beer. Um, nice bit of juicy fruit in this, this one, quite an oily juicy fruit from the oranges, like I was saying, it's very straight up in its oranges, there's not much uh, else of a complexity in, in it to me, it's, it is very straight up in the orangey qualities, um, but you've also got just a nice little bit of uh, of sweetness from the malt base too, there is just a little bit of a biscuity note creeping out there, but overall a really nice uh, beer this one, I like how it's kind of come across and it is a little bit nostalgic as I say, Amarillo being one of the old school hops uh, in terms of IPAs, we say old school but we're only talking about five years ago, so um, yeah, thumbs up to Hop uh, to hop Notch for this one, I hope I can try a couple more of the beers, but this has certainly been a nice introduction to the brewery and uh, I'm sure, uh, knowing Jessica, I'm sure it will go pretty well for her. So um, yeah, hopefully there's more to review in the fairly near future, but let's leave it at that just now. So once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Hot Notch Brewing as well, and you will definitely see me review more from these guys in the fairly near future. You should see me review the, um, the, pink, the new Pink Boots beer actually. 
think it's called Boot Print, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, you'll see me review that in the next couple of videos. I hope you've enjoyed this one, and I will catch you guys very soon. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Check out some of the Hot Notch beers. Make sure you check out my social media, and I will catch you guys very soon. This one, to remember the name, is called the Hop Star, an Amarillo IPA coming in at 7% ABV from Hot Notch Brewing in the Stockholm area here in Sweden. Slange, Skull.